So in this video, we're going to go through some of the more advanced features of FlexScan as well as the inspection aspects that we have inside of this software. So FlexScan is a great tool for processing out our data if we need to uh, take this off to a 3D printer or we simply just need to clean up some information. Uh, it's a really good tool for doing that. We have a mesh editor that will allow us to come in and edit this mesh and then we also have our calculate deviation tool and a hole filling tool. All of this we'll discuss as soon as we finalize our file. So right now our scan data is essentially a bunch of different layers of all the individual scans that we created and we need to turn those into one. So to do that, we have a few different options. Uh, if you just want to take this off to a 3D printed part, we can use our smooth merge and uh, adjust our hole filling and our decimation accordingly, which hole filling fills holes. Decimate makes your file, file small. So right now we're just going to use the precise merge uh, and while we're letting that process, let's talk about the decimate function a little bit. We'll cover it a little bit more here in just a moment, but you may be asking why would you want to make your file, sauce, file smaller? You know, we spend a decent amount of money working on purchasing a scanner that has a high scan resolution. Why would you want to make that scan file smaller? Well, the decimation process works a little bit differently than just making your file smaller. It actually maintains the curvature of your part. So for instance, if we decimate this file that we just did a precise merge on, uh, let's take it down to 67% of what the original file was. So we saw what that file looked like, and now we'll come in and say, see that file again. It doesn't look that much different. And the reason why is because we did a decimation process based upon curvature, which what that means is if we come in here and break down what this file looks like in areas of high curvature, such as the radius going around the edge of some of these cylinders, we maintain a lot of data. You know, or this fillet coming around the side of the part. However, on areas of low curvature, like the middle of this part, we cut out a lot of that excess data that we don't need. Uh, and then you can really see it here on this flat surface up on top as opposed to all the various geometry around it. So that's a great tool for maintaining an accurate file while reducing the file size. Let's talk a little bit about our mesh editor and hole filling. So we have our mesh editor here which allows us to do a couple different things. Let's say we want to smooth this file out, so we want to get rid of just some of the excess bumps in the file. And also, let's say we have some weird noise around certain areas, like maybe deep in this pocket we have a little bit of strange noise going on that we may want to get rid of. Well, if we press the erode button, it'll automatically remove that for us. Uh, so <clears throat> from here, let's take this file and throw it through our hole filling tool to where we can talk about using this to create a watertight 3D model. So <clears throat> our hole, to hole filling tool is great because it allows us to do a lot of different things. First off, we can create these bridges, which these bridges allow us to have this hole fill in a specific manner. So if we have a specific way that we want that hole to fill, we can have it fill out like that. Um, and then we also have our autofill tool, which will just automatically go in and fill everything that's selected. So if you notice, we just have one more hole that we need to fill. And if we bump this up and press autofill, we'll see if it fills it, which it didn't. And sometimes you run into a problem where the hole doesn't want to fill for various reasons. Uh, usually there's some complex geometry or something doesn't quite match. When we run into these situations, that bridge tool that we were using earlier, which it's strictly just using the mouse and creating these little lines, really works wonders on uh, problems that we may have in our file. So if you notice, we pressed it, now it's watertight. We have a watertight mesh. And this could be taken off into a 3D printer and replicated. 
<clears throat> so very simple, very easy to use uh, 3D cleanup tools. Now let's go in and talk about how we can use this for inspection. So <clears throat> let's rename this file. Actually, let's get out of that first. Yes, we're going to save this version of the file. Uh, let's delete that off. So let's rename this. We'll call it demo test. Okay. And I've also built a demo reference part, which is the same file. It's just been smoothed and decimated to an extreme standpoint where it looks completely different. You can see everything's rounded off. Uh, we made this file look a lot different than the original version. So if we want to do an analysis between these two, all we have to do is simply align the two files so that they're on top of each other, just like we would when we're scanning. And then we're going to go to this Calculate Deviation tool. So we're going to save the altered 3D files, then we're going to grab our reference, and we're going to grab our test, and we're going to press Calculate Deviation. So what we can see on this model is we get this color map of variation on our file. So we can see where it's smoothed off and round over the edges. We can very clearly see those rounds. Um, we can also see some surface deviations that just run throughout the part as that smoothing algorithm really went in and tried to tighten out various aspects of our file. So the Calculate Deviation tool is a great way to do basic part analysis. We can use this file for, uh, or we can use this tool rather, to do a simple go, no go on a part. Basically we can set our maximum values to our tolerances and if the part's without, outside of those tolerances and an operator sees red on the part, they can reject it. Uh, or we can actually use it to start to pinpoint and identify where our part is falling in and out of our nominal values. So we have a couple different ways to actually look at analysis on this part. We're not able to take hard measurements. We can't directly compare this to a CAD model uh, and then take geometric. Uh, we can't take distances and angles uh, using this tool. It's really strictly based off of this calculate deviation function. Um, but a lot of times when you're on a limited budget, this is a great tool that can help you get all the information that you need. So uh, we are going to go into another software called Geomagic Control. That is a fully in-depth uh, QC software specifically designed around scan data and working with scan data compared to CAD data or blueprint data. Uh, so we're going to discuss that in an additional video. But this really covers the basics of flex scan um, as far as what we use on a day-to-day -day basis inside of this software.